Hello. So why do positive and negative charges spiral in a magnetic field? Well, that's something that puzzled me for quite a while and I didn't quite figure it out until a few days ago. Um, so uh, I want to make this video to kind of show you guys how I think about it now. And in, at BU, in Professor Duffy's section, I noticed a lot of people were kind of getting this confused. So hopefully this clears it up for you guys. Um, hopefully at this point, you already know that when you have a charge, whether it's positive or negative, in a magnetic field, and it's moving, when its velocity is perpendicular or at 90 degrees with the magnetic field, you'll have circular motion, either into the board or out, out of the board, depending if it's a positive or negative charge. And then when the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees, like this one, 45 degrees, it'll experience spiraling or helical motion. So why is that? Well, we're going to figure that out. But before we do that, in order to do that, we need to make sure we're all on the same page with the right hand rule. So let's do that. Um, I know there's a bunch of different ones at different schools. So at BU, Professor Duffy teaches that your fingers go in the direction of velocity, your palm is the direction of the magnetic field, and your thumb is the force. Uh, I used that one for a little bit, and then over the years during tutoring, I found another one that I like a little more, and mine is very similar. My index finger is the velocity, just like similar to Professor Duffy's, but instead of the palm being the field, I'm gonna have my middle finger be the field and then my thumb is going to be the force, just like Professor Duffy's. But I like this one a little more than uh, just because I can see the angle between my velocity and my field more easily when I use this right hand rule. I can tweak each component. And that's good because this angle between my velocity and my field is the theta, or the angle, in your equation for a magnetic force, which is the charge times its velocity that's moving at times the field, times sine of the angle between the velocity and the field. So yeah, this right hand rule allows you to see that angle a little more clearly. clearly. As the angle between your velocity and your B, your magnetic field, decreases, that's going to shrink your force. And your force is going to be maximum when they're at a 90 degree angle. Okay, So as the angle shrinks, no force, or the force goes down. And now, that's because uh, sine of 90 is 1. So 1 times whatever value is going to be the biggest value you can get, versus if you have 0, sine of 0 is 0. 0 times whatever value is just 0, meaning no force whatsoever. Okay. And if you're at like 45, that's going to be between 1 and 0. So let's say, I think it's 0.7. So 0.7 times whatever value definitely isn't going to be as big as 1 times this value because 0.7 is, is like a fraction, uh, which is, yeah, it's just not going to be as big. So anyways, that's why I like this right-hand rule. And then for problems, uh, now very important, this is only for problems where you have two charges that are the same charge, so same Q, same velocity, one meters per second, or whatever, same velocity, and in the same exact field, when these three are exactly the same, you can just use my right hand rule and figure out which one experiences a greater force and which one experiences a lesser force. Okay? Which one do you think experiences a lesser force or greater force? Um, who's texting me? All right. So, anyways, um, this one has a 90 degree angle and this one has a 45 degree angle. So, the angle closer to 90 is going to give you the bigger force. So, this particle feels a larger force this particle feels a smaller force. And remember, this only applies when QVB is the same for both uh, scenarios. And you're just comparing the angle between them. OK? Um, and I have seen problems where they purposely ask you that same question, but they'll purposely give you a bigger velocity here on this particle, but at a smaller angle. And you might think that this experiences a smaller force because the angle's smaller, but the larger velocity compensates for it. All right. So anyways, right hand rule, we got that down. Um, back to the main point about this video, uh, spiraling of the charges. So right hand rule, um, velocity is up, field is to the left, my thumb is the force, so the force that a positive charge feels is out of the board. Here we go. And then uh, for negative charge, right hand rule, velocity, field, force, but 
your right hand rule lies to you for negative charges. So instead of out, it's actually going to be in. So I'll use X to represent into the board. And you can also just use your left hand if you want um, for negative charges, velocity, field, and force. Okay, so force is into the board. Velocity, field, force. Boom, into the board. Okay, and the significance of that is that this positive charge, if it was positive, it's gonna go up first because it feels the initial velocity, it's, and then it's gonna uh, get a change in velocity direction due to the force. So it's gonna go out of the board and then eventually circular motion. And that's because velocity, field force, uh, we can ignore the, f actually no, we'll keep the field here. So whoosh. as the velocity direction changes, the force direction is gonna change with it because they're always gonna be perpendicular and it can't go anymore. So pause. All right, I'll continue. Velocity, force, and it's gonna cause it to constantly go in a circle, circular motion. And the force is gonna be constantly pointed towards the center of its circular path. And that's why this particle would undergo circular motion. If it was a negative charge, same thing, but it would just start here, go up, and then into the board, because the force is pushing it into the board first. And then, yeah, circular motion. Okay, now in this situation, you have the same exact thing, kind of, all right? But whenever you have your velocity and field at an angle between zero and 90, like 45 degrees, there's always gonna be a component, always, 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 gonna be a component that's parallel to the magnetic field, and then a velocity component that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we'll call this Vy and Vx. And the significance is that Vy, the y component, is gonna be affected just the same way as before because it's going up. So it's gonna, the y component is gonna be affected by the magnetic force, okay? The magnetic field can only generate a magnetic force that affects the velocity component that's perpendicular to the field, so Vy. So Vy is gonna be changing direction and it's gonna move in circular motion outside, uh, out of the board towards you guys, just like before. And if it was negative, it would go into the board at first and then move in circular motion. But this time we have this Vx component, this horizontal component that's moving parallel to the field going this direction. And that's not gonna be affected by the field at all. The field can't generate any force at all to change this velocity. So not only will it move in a circle outside, well, out of the board first back and then back into the board, but there's that velocity so it's gonna spiral towards me while it's moving in a circle. So it kinda looks like it's moving in a circle but it's coming closer towards me so it's a spiral or a helix. And Vx cannot be affected by a field because uh, well, that's, that's a fact. And another reason is equation-wise, uh, if you just, if you thought of this particle as having only a x velocity, just this component, you do Q, Vx times B times sine of zero. Because the angle between Vx and B is just zero. So Q, Vx, B, sine zero is just zero. So no magnetic force can act on Vx. But Vy, it would be Q, Vy, B, sine of 90 degrees, because that's the angle between the Y component and the field. So a, a magnetic force can act on Vy. And in fact, magnetic fields can only exert a magnetic force on velocities that are perpendicular, or velocity components that are perpendicular to the field. Okay, now that's kind of a lot to take in, so just think about that for a little bit. So we have velocity that's not perfectly perpendicular to the field. There's still gonna be a component that is, and only that component that's perpendicular to the field will be affected by the magnetic force generated by the magnetic field. Okay, yeah. Uh, I might even need to replay that a little bit. A lot of terms there, but yeah, okay. So uh, circular motion, but because there's this Vx that is there now, it's gonna cause circular motion, but spiraling motion. Spiraling motion out towards me. And if it was a negative charge, it would feel a force going into the board at first, so it would go up into the board, 
and then because of the velocity x, x component that's there, spiral towards me or helical motion towards me. Okay. Yeah, Professor Duffy put it in a pretty good way in the lecture. He said uh, circular motion plus linear or translational motion equals spiraling motion. Circular motion plus linear motion equals spiraling motion. Okay? Awesome. Cool. So that is why positive and negative charges spiral in a magnetic field. Um, when the angle between velocity and the field is not perfectly 90 or, or 0, there's going to be a component that is going to be affected by the field and cause the particle to move in a circular path. And then the other component that's unaffected by the field is going to cause the particle to move in a linear motion. So all together gives you a spiraling motion. Okay. All right. Hope that made sense. Um, a lot of terms there, I know. Uh, think about these two cases now. What direction is the, are the charges going to spiral if they were positive and if they were negative? Okay. And also, what force do they feel at this point in time when their velocities are pointed in those directions? All right, try that out, hit pause, and we'll check your answers. Okay, see you in a second. Well, I hope that made sense. Um, I'm making this video a little late at night, so yes, hope it makes sense. As always, if you like this video, make sure you like it down there. and. I'll let your friends know. That's a great way to help support my channel in this video project. If you'd like to make a donation or anything like that, uh, you can do so on my website, orgomadeeasy.org. I have a tab for donations. I really appreciate it if you do. But uh, if not, thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you have any feedback, ideas, suggestions, and I'll see you in another video then. Okay? Bye.